Thanks, Stephanie, and thanks everyone for being here. I'm really excited to um, discuss our process here that we've implemented um, using ExamSoft. Um, so just a heads up, um, let me just move forward here. Um, I'm not really going into the methodologies of adult learning, but my focus will be sharing my own experience instructing faculty on ExamSoft and what's working for us thus far. So the topics that I'm going to cover in this section is determining the timeline for implementation to meet the goals of your respective school, creating a lesson plan for ExamSoft training, ways to train faculty so they can autonomously utilize ExamSoft, and things to consider when creating your trainings. Um, also, tips for receiving feedback on trainings and what we've done here. So just to give you a little background, um, the School of Nursing is divided by graduate and undergraduate nursing programs. Um, the gradu graduate programs were already utilizing um, CBT via ExamSoft, um, and they're actually broken up into smaller groups by specialty. Um, so something to consider, it is nice to pilot smaller groups if that's something that's possible for your school. Um, we didn't plan this, but that's how it worked out for us, and so that was really beneficial for us. Um, I actually work specifically with the nurse midwifery program, and we wanted a comprehensive test data bank because we like to give our students comprehensive exams at the end of their two-year term. Um, and it just became too cumbersome to find the questions again, see what we haven't used, you know, editing the questions. So we really wanted something with a test data bank, and that's how we were introduced to ExamSoft. Um, so on the other hand, the dean was wanting to transition the whole school into computer-based training or testing. Um, in its entirety, just because we have this Scantron machine that's probably at the end of its life. And we really wanted to keep up with the times as far as having CBT, because a lot of the licensing tests that they, the students do take are through their computers. Um, so we wanted to replicate that. Um, so as of fall 2015, so this coming fall, um, actually starting next week for us, all laptops are required with specifications that allow for CBT of all our students. Um, that was not something that we had before, but we really want to push this, so that's something that we started requiring this coming fall term. Um, so what I'm going to discuss today was mainly the implementation of the exam soft for under, the, mostly the undergraduate program. So here's our timeline. We have the policy in place. And the policy was um, basically applicable to everyone this coming fall. The official implementation start date was of July 1st. Um, so that's when we started to have our planning meetings. Fall term start date is actually next Monday, which is crazy, but it's coming quick. Um, so that basically gave us three months to train fall term faculty for preparation for using ExamSoft. So um, obviously we made this open to all faculty, but our main focus was to get the fall term faculty in for their training. That way they could start utilizing it right away. So going into the lesson plan, these are things to consider. So I'm actually going to show you um, what we did at our school and how it's worked for us. And as you know, it's only been, we're at month three now, and we're fully there starting next week. But um, there was definitely some things to learn. So I'm. this is more my opinion based on what we went through. Let me just tell you by starting off with letting you know a little bit more about our faculty. So our faculty are not only clinicians, researchers, preceptors, instructors, as well as students themselves. They're actually, many of them are continuing their education either by research or actually going on forward and getting their PhD. So um, this is something to consider that this is not going to be an easy task to get all the nursing faculty in a room that need this training. So. Um, 
you know, and this is just the, the work part of their life, so they still have their life to live. So these are some things that, some characteristics that we really like, wanted to really follow through with for our trainings. Time. So we wanted something that was not incredibly time consuming for our faculty. Um, flexibility in scheduling, so we wanted to offer trainings and one-on-one -on -one appointments to them. Accessible, meaning attainable at a distance, so if it's possible that you record your trainings and then later have faculty view it at their own pace, that's even better. Um, simple training structure. I'm, you know, with our trainings, we wanted to give them an overview of ExamSoft instead of going into the nitty-gritty right away. Um, and I'll show you what we actually came up with as far as our, our course structure. Um, very informal Q&A format is how we did a lot of our trainings because we find that, you know, faculty have a lot of specific questions that a lot of times pertain to them and so, and the way they teach, and so we really wanted to address those. You want to give them a clear layout of their support structures, meaning let them know who's who in the process of managing ExamSoft. An opportunity for giving feedback because this is so new to them. We want to make sure that these trainings are actually efficient and effective for them. And we also want it to be fun and engaging because it's really hard to teach any computer-based, you know, new software to faculty that maybe are a little adverse to computers in the first hand, in the first place. So I'm just going over, this is what my lesson structure looked like. So I was really, um, you know, you can tell it's just very general. What is ExamSoft, ExamSoft versus Sakai? So we actually did have, um, we still have what we call Sakai. It might be Blackboard for other schools, but we have a computer-based testing system already in place, but um, they don't have the security functions that ExamSoft has. Um, account administration, adding questions, category structure, creating and distributing exam, exam day preparation, feedback and reports. So this is kind of a real overall of the system itself. Um, as far as preparing for the training sessions, we offered one training each month with one-on-one -on -one trainings by appointment depending on the faculty schedule. Um, one training, we scheduled it for about one and a half hours, depending on the question and answer. Um, we also sent faculty logins a week prior to the training with introductory materials so they can have a vision of what ExamSoft looks like, at least, prior to class. And we didn't require that, but we went ahead and sent them all that information. Um, I also, when I created their accounts initially, I made sure that they had access to sample folders. So we kind of created a sandbox type of environment for using ExamSoft so they can go ahead and play with ExamSoft a little bit more without, you know, messing up someone else's questions, um, you know, if they felt apt to do that. So as far as the execution of the training sessions, um, we actually did record our class sessions, so then they could be viewable to faculty even after the class or um, for those that could not make it. I had ExamSoft in the back of my computer, kind of logged in already, ready to go, um, during the training session because, like I said, it was very informal, kind of a Q&A session. As I went, I used the slides as um, an outline, but I didn't stick to it so much as depending on what the faculty asked of me as far as questions go and what really was applicable to them. Um, another option would be even maybe doing this in a computer lab because I find that a lot of these things are hard to learn when you're just watching. A lot of it is actually going in and doing, um, you know, creating questions and creating folders. Um, so moving forward, what I did at the beginning of the class was state the overall goal. Um, our goal for the training was to introduce ExamSoft to faculty so they have the basic tools to further their knowledge base on CBT. Um, as you know, there's going to be variation. You might have one faculty that is super gung-ho about using um, you 
know, the category structure. You might have one that doesn't want anything to do with that and they just want to get the test out to students and have it be secure. So my goal was basically to give faculty a general overview so that they can autonomously make use of the CBT software and feel comfortable doing so. And I really, you know, stated that at the beginning of the training because it is kind of intimidating to some people and my goal was to have them feel um, empowered instead of intimidated about this new program that they're being asked to use at this point. Okay, so during training sessions, I kind of just put sign-in sheet there because um, I found out on the second training that it was actually a good idea to have them sign in and then also let us know um, the courses that they're teaching and an inquiry on when they plan to utilize CBT. Um, for us, it's really good for us to know so then we can actually follow up with them maybe a few weeks into the term that they plan on or actually if they give a specific date of the actual midterm or final, we'll follow up with them um, just so we know what's going on. Um, I use the PowerPoint, like I said, as more of a guide, but taught very informally, allowing for questions and discussions, um, and we use screenshots as an intro into a topic, then delve deeper by doing an example online. Um, we encourage faculty to ask a lot of questions, but also to be mindful of the lesson structure. Uh, like, as you can see, going back to the lesson structure, they kind of follow um, one after the other as far as what you do next. Um, so, you know, we, we were very open to questions, and, and that's what made it an hour and a half. Um, but it was better because the faculty were more engaged. Um, one thing to consider is we actually kept our class sizes fairly small. Um, there were three to six faculty in one training. Um, we found that to be really beneficial because they were able to get that one-on-one -on -one type of um, experience. And it is really helpful for those that are really intimidated by technology in general. Um, so we got a lot of good feedback regarding the cl small class sizes. So I'm actually going to go in, um, you can see my bullet points here, I'm going to go in into each section here in category and actually show you um, what I did as far as making this more user friendly and having it be a little bit more engaging for our faculty. So when I discussed what exam soft was, I made sure that my identified my terms clearly soft tests and exam soft are two different things. Um, I explained the method methodology of implementation. A lot of faculty, you know, sometimes they just need to know why are we moving forward with this? I mean, um, why is it that the Scantron is not going to work anymore? And so I was really clear in explaining that to my faculty and, and the dean's mission and moving on to CBT. Um, Again, I let them know this is a general overview. This is up to you as far as how much you want to actually utilize the program. But I want to give you the tools that you need so you can utilize it to the extent that you want to. Um, we had another CBT, which is Sakai. Um, so I kind of told them the pros and cons for each software and what would work best for them. I even actually inquired with them, you know, how do you normally administer exams? Do you usually use quizzes or is it the type of thing where you have about 300 questions in one exam? And that could really help me figure out what would work best for them and, um, and to have them understand that as well. Um, I included examples of when you would use one over the other. And again, this is all driven by faculty's questions and inquiries. So I delved as deep as they wanted me to, basically. Going on to account administration, basically gave them the contacts information for the administrators, one being myself and one being a coworker of mine. And then um, I also discussed the different functionalities and access type for accounts and gave them real life examples. For instance, if they have 
a TA that is helping them just grade essays, then we have the ability to give them just that type of access. So, I mean, it might sound minor, but it is really helpful for faculty to know that there are those options. <clears throat> Okay, so adding questions. Um, I started with a screenshot, then I went in and um, went into ExamSoft to show them what it actually looks like. Um, I found that from the feedback that we got that that was really helpful to kind of explain the situation and then go in and show them an example. Or if you're in a computer lab, to have them do it themselves. Um, so. Be sure to point out all of the help functionalities and resources for adding questions. There are so many bells and whistles with ExamSoft and so many resources that you can use um, to have faculty, you know, most of them are typing up questions late Sunday night and, you know, we're not available during those hours, but they have all these other resources that are readily available for them and that's really important for them to know. Um, I actually went in and showed them what our school's folder structure look like. Um, just as a heads up to you guys, I, um, we actually divided ours by campus and then by campus location because we do have other locations within our school. Um, and then we further um, divided it by undergrad or graduate programs and then obviously by specialty. So that was really helpful for them to know. Again, They'll have different access. Undergraduate faculty only have access to undergraduate folders. Um, we do a sample of creating a question on site, and I actually have faculty help me do that because the content is not my forte. There's specialties in that, but I um, know how to use the program more so. So, <clears throat> so that was actually kind of fun to do that with faculty and you know we do fun questions and again I created a sample folder for all these questions to go into so you're not messing up any other folders that you have available. Okay so moving on to category structure. I showed them samples of category structure with the midwifery program we got really far in categorizing our questions so that was really helpful for them to see. Um, I showed them again the resources and help sites on creating category structures. Um, and then also one thing is to connect them with faculty. So if you have a faculty that is deeply experienced in ExamSoft and really utilizing the category function, um, obviously I ask them if this is okay and I actually relay their names to some faculty that are interested in doing that because again, um, because I'm not an expert in the content and I'm more an expert in the program, um, it was really helpful for faculty to also have that peer support. Okay, so creating and distribution of exam. I think this you can change quite a bit depending on your school structure, um, you know, the rooms that you have available to you. I actually uh, created an exam during the training um, and I used the sample questions that we created um, and then I kind of show them all the functionalities of creating an exam using category structure so being able to search a particular word or a particular category um, and then being able to pull those questions and I think that was really kind of fascinating for them and also kind of initiated the thought of maybe I should use categories myself, you know, so um, getting them really engaged and showing them that yes, it is a lot of work initially, but once you do it, you don't have to do it again and those questions are there and it's just about revising those questions. Um, you know, with the question, the Q&A happening during the session, it's really important to stay focused on each topic so the flow makes sense. Um, initially, I was jumping all over this place and then I kind of said, you know, look at the structure of this and see that one does follow the other. So just keep that in mind when you're asking questions. All right, so exam day preparation. Again, this is going to be specific to your school. Um, I let them know that most issues will happen at the beginning or end of the exam. 
Um, I also gave them scenarios, like real life scenarios as far as things that have happened to us and things to consider. So for instance, during one big exam, our fire alarm went off and because the exam was already in progress, there was no way for me to stop or add time to my student's exam because of the fire drill. And so, you know, something to consider, maybe add 15 minutes to the clock if you're allowing your students to take breaks here and there, because once it's out, I know for a fact that you can't go in and change it. Um, definitely encourage practice exams, or better yet, make it institutional. So. Um, with the help of our Sakai team, we actually created a module in Sakai and might be Blackboard for some or some other um, online platform for academia. Um, we actually created a module that had all the introductory information regarding ExamSoft and also um, a link to access your test exam. So, well, I guess sample exam. So it was nice to have require that of students, which we'll start to next week, um, because then we have assurance that you know, their laptops were great for exam stuff, were good to go, and they should be fine for their first exam. Um, I also let the faculty know at this point when exam soft support is available. Um, I let them know that they should abstain from Sunday night, Sunday night deadlines because the students and or faculty might not have support that evening, even from our exam soft specialist because of the hours. Um, kind of showed them the bells and whistles for exam distribution, again, using um, all the sample folders that were initially created. Okay, so feedback and reports. This was some of my faculty's favorite part, was because a lot of them are very analytical and they really liked the feedback function of ExamSoft. And so um, I initially started with feedback and reports for faculty and kind of used a sample, a mock exam that I could pull reports from. Again, this was all created prior to the training. Um, and I would pull the various reports off. I initially would ask them, you know, what kind of reports do you normally pull or what are some reports that the Scantron did that you know would be super helpful for you? A lot of it was item analysis, but they were really taken aback as far as how much detail goes into the category reports and you know like the performance, the longitudinal performance, and they were really into that. So you know it's sometimes you have to just show them things that they would love to see and, and show them that it is possible via CBT. Um, so then after I spoke about the feedback and reports for faculty, I actually moved on to feedbacks and report for student, uh, for the students and what the students can see. And it's nice because you can actually preview everything before you actually release it to the students. So I showed them that functionality as well. Um, again, I like to ask faculty, what do you normally release to your students? And, you know, what would be nice to be able to release to your students? And sometimes, you know, we just can't do exactly what they want, but there are um, workarounds and ways to kind of get around that after talking to them. And it's really good to just know exactly what the faculty want. Again, these are really small class sizes, so they felt like they had a one-on-one -on -one training. And I also showed them at this point the vari variances of ways that you can actually release the material to the students, whether it be email or portal um, or whatever they preferred. Okay, so at the end of it, I kind of just gave an overall summary again, visiting, um, visiting my outline at the very beginning that I showed. And then I allowed time for Q&A. Usually at this point, though, there are no more questions that need to be asked because they've been asking questions throughout the whole session, which is really nice because they're kind of getting, instead of forgetting their questions for later, they are able to engage with me and also um, have a conversation about CBT instead of having an instructor talk to them about how to use the system. Um, let's see, I just want to make sure I didn't miss anything. All right. Um, 
So moving on, here. what we did as our school decided as far as feedback goes, um, I sent them a SurveyMonkey link after the training sessions and asked them, you know, what worked for you, what didn't work for you, and then we continuously revised as necessary. Um, you know, the very first training we didn't record and then we got to on the second training because that was something that we got from the faculty saying it would have been nice if it was recorded as well so I can look at it after the fact. So we started doing that and it just has continuously improved as far as, you know, using up their time and also um, allowing them to learn the program. Um, at this point I also uh, let them know that I'm going to be sending them the presentation as well as links to um, helpful information once they get started and going into exam soft. All right, so an overview of what I just went through. Determining the timeline, again, this is, you know, dependent on your respective school. Um, I went through what we did in creating a lesson plan for exam soft training. Ways to train faculty so they can autonomously utilize exam soft comfortably. Um, and things to consider when creating your training, as, as well as tips for receiving feedback on training. And I am ready for questions myself, so that is me. And thank you so much for taking the time to listen to this presentation. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Michelle. We are going to go ahead and open up the forum for questions now. If you do have a question you'd like to pose to Michelle, now would be the time to enter it into the questions area of the GoToWebinar control panel, which should be on the right-hand side of your screen. All you have to do is type them in. I'll read them out, and we will have Michelle go ahead and respond. We already have them coming in, so I'm going to go ahead and jump into it, Michelle, if it's okay with you. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. First question we have is, how involved are your faculty currently in the actual use of ExamSoft? Currently, well, um, speaking to the graduate side, they are very, very involved now. So as staff, what we do is we go ahead and we have the faculty create their questions and send it to us, and then we, you know, upload it into ExamSoft, and they actually go in and create their folders for categorization. So it really, I mean, I guess it does vary. Graduate side is more into utilizing it because they have the comprehensive exams. But the undergraduate side, because they're just learning it, um, I think I can pick two or three faculty that are really wanting to use the category function. So it kind of varies. Like it really depends on how gung-ho the faculty is about using their category structure. But as soon as I let them know that this is kind of your library for your questions, and you can use these however you want. You'll always have them. So that was really kind of the push for really utilizing ExamSoft in particular. Okay, next question. Once initial training was over, what was faculty support like going forward? So going forward, um, you know, there faculty support was mainly um, they could either contact me or my coworker who is also um, helping me in this process. But we actually, so for each program, there is one graduate academic associate, you know, support staff. So for each specialty, they had one person. And I actually went ahead and trained all the staff as well. So they're just as competent as I am, you know, obviously if they have questions at a higher level, I could answer those for them. But support was pretty good for faculty. Right now for the undergraduate, because there's such a large group, we're trying to think about maybe we need to hire, you know, two or three people to help support exam soft if this is what we're going to use in the near future. Great. Next question. How did you receive the training you needed to train faculty? Um, so my training came from actually utilizing ExamSoft about three years ago. And so I kind of, in a way, 
trained myself, but also had a lot of support from ExamSoft. You know, our account manager was really helpful, and then also um, I've done these webinars in the past, but I really was fully engaged in wanting to learn more, and I'm finding that the resources that ExamSoft has, even just online, has been really great, or I would contact our, um, our account manager and see if there's any additional trainings I could do, but these webinars have been incredibly helpful for me to really develop my skill set for ExamSoft because it's nice I can search exactly what I need and find it. Um, but I think as far as my training goes, having used it for three years now has been, um, has been a really great experience for me to be able to learn that way and actually utilize it at the same time. All right, next question. What were some of the biggest challenges or common questions during your training and implementation? Sure, so the biggest challenges um, were, I would say, I, this is pretty school specific to us, is, but, but it's space. So finding that space where students will have access to outlets and, you know, this is something that we have to discuss with our other buildings, not only within the School of Nursing, but also School of Dentistry and School of Medicine, and so, um, which also, by the way, are using ExamSoft. So it's really, um, really kind of that collaborative, how are they doing it? Um, the PA program at the School of Medicine was actually already utilizing ExamSoft before the midwifery program did it, and I had a lot of meetings with their administrators as far as how they use it along with their staff, like what's working for them and that's been incredibly helpful for us. As far as um, challenges with faculty questions during the trainings, um, a lot of the challenges was just really understanding the full scope of, of you know, like, because there's variances as far as how, how much a faculty wants to utilize ExamSoft. And so, um, you know, being able to offer that support, but also, um, but also be realistic and, and think, you know, we're going to need someone probably full-time, at least one person, to be able to help the faculty as they move through it. Because when the term starts, we're all really, really busy. And obviously, I'm, I'm just, I'm still supporting two other programs as well as helping with its implementation. So um, I think staff support and space has been the biggest challenge for us. Great. Next question is, do you use ExamSoft for all of your testing, or do you alternate between ExamSoft and Sakai? So this is, um, this is pretty faculty specific, uh, and that's why I, during the training I kind of did the pros and cons of both. So most exams that um, require security function will be done via ExamSoft, because with ExamSoft, it locks their screen and they can't veer away from um, whatever they whatever the exam is, so they can't go online. Um, that's one of the biggest things. If it's something like a like a short quiz, um, my recommendation for faculty is to use Sakai because it is a little bit simpler as far as putting the questions in. Um, again. This is not uh, a secure way of doing it, but if it's a proctored exam and it's something where you can be in the room and see their screen, then I say by all means. If it's an open book exam, definitely use Sakai. You can keep your questions in ExamSoft and keep that as your library, but you can also transition those and deploy your exams via Sakai. So that's what I always tell my faculty. So I guess it's kind of, it depends on the exam that they want to administer, whether they use ExamSoft or Sakai. Next question is, how do you plan to train new faculty in the future? So um, to train new faculty in the future, so what we're doing right now is every term we'll have one training each month. Again, there's the recordings as well. Um, and then, you know, they'll kind of go over the training and then meet with me or um, my coworker to kind of do a one-on-one -on -one Q and A session just with them. And, walk them through it. Again, some faculty are going to need more support than others. 
and so that's something to consider. Again, that's another staff issue, but um, but as far as you know, kind of implementing it from the get-go, like when faculty come in, um, we might consider doing that in the future. But right now, um, our our priority is kind of shifting everyone from uh, Scantron to CBT. So in the future, I would love it if we had exam soft training as part of their faculty orientation. That would be wonderful. But right now, what we're doing is kind of doing it on an as-needed basis and then again once monthly. Okay, next question is, are any of your graduate courses completely online? If so, how do you handle exams with those classes? We actually have um, one graduate class that is fully online, but they don't do exams. They don't take exams, so I'll have to say no to that one, that we have one fully online. We do have some distance students within our specialties, and the way we do that is um, using ExamSoft for their exams is we actually have a sheet that goes out to a proctor so they can find a proctor in their community, someone that you know either works at a library or a nearby school, a librarian, anyone um, that we can have sign the form and send it back to us. And um, ExamSoft actually requires a password to start the exam. And so we have our students arrange that with their proctor and then we give the proctor um, the actual password to start and they relay that to the student. So um, that's how we do those. Okay, next question. How tech savvy do faculty need to be to do well with this software? And are there are some fa are there some faculty that are having more trouble using the program than others? Sure. Um, yeah, so as far as how tech savvy they need to be, I think that they just need to be open to it. Um, you know, some faculty see computers and they don't want anything to do with it. They hand off their questions to staff and just are like, I don't, that's fine, just as long as my students have access to it, they know how to do it, I'm okay. Um, you don't, I don't feel that you need to be that incredibly tech savvy. Um, you know, I've had one faculty that started at the beginning of, we, she did her training in July. And, you know, she was really adverse to doing anything on the computer because, you know, she was so used to pen and paper. But as soon as I showed her how much easier it is for her to rewrite her questions and, and actually be able to save that all in one place, um, now she's actually a pretty high performer in using ExamSoft for that reason because it just helps her as well. And, um, presenting it that way is a tool to help your faculty, you know, for those continuing to write exams every, every term or maybe, you know, they won't have to do that anymore. They could actually write all their questions as they think of it and put it in their test data bank and save it for later. So um, as far as how tech savvy you are, I don't think, I don't think that really um, you need to be incredibly tech savvy to be able to utilize it. Great. That's all the questions that we have for you, Michelle. Thank you so much for your presentation and for sharing your experiences and knowledge. Um, folks, just want to remind everybody of a couple of things before we all close out and go about our day. Um, first off, Michelle has another presentation coming up next Wednesday, September 30th, entitled Best Practices for Implementation of ExamSoft in a Nursing Education Environment. So if you're looking for more detailed information on the actual process of implementation and the program itself, that's going to be a great webinar as well. Next Thursday, you can register for that on our um, resources page, learn.examsoft.com forward slash resources. Um, also, this webinar has been recorded. You will get a link to the recording in the next couple of days, so watch for that in your email box. Um, last. Uh, just a reminder is when you close out of this presentation, you will get a quick survey that will pop up for you from GoToWebinar. Again, we would just really appreciate if anybody taking you know, just a few seconds to fill that out for us so we can continue to provide uh, relevant content and content that you want to hear um, at these presentations. 
Um, with that, I'm going to go ahead and sign off. Thank you so much, Michelle. Thank you so much to the audience for